Hey, I'm done with Immervo, and thank you for spending some time with me today to talk about the trombone. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's get to it. In this video, we are going to discuss parts of the trombone, how to hold the trombone, sound production, the positions on the trombone, and how to create a great tone quality on the instrument. The trombone is made up of two main parts. We have the bell that you see here, and we also have the slide. Now, the trombone is made up of smaller parts, which I'm going to discuss. We have the tuning slide, which is attached to the bell. We also have the mouthpiece, the brace where we hold the horn, we have a slide lock, and just to kind of give you an idea of how it looks like here, because with the slide lock, we can easily hold the slide together. Without it, once we remove the lock, the slide is able to fall, so you have to be careful. Uh, within the slide, we have the outer slide, which I'm going to pull out now. This is the outer slide, and then we have the inner slide. I'm gonna go ahead and place the outer slide back on. And that's how we play the trombone. And then right here we have the water key. And that's pretty much all the parts of the trombone. I'm going to show you the easiest way to hold the trombone. Now, if you're familiar with sign language, this here means love, all right? So look what's going on here. I'm going to place my thumb here, my index finger on the mouthpiece, and my pinky finger on the slide. Again, I'm going to remove it. Love, thumb, index, pinky. And that's how you hold the trombone. Now, once we remove the slide lock, we would remove our pinky finger from the outer slide. And then therefore we would use our right hand to move the slide. Now you only need three fingers to move to utilize the slide. We need our index, our middle finger, and our thumb. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you this way so you can have a better view of it. Just three fingers. And it's all about moving your wrist and then you will soon enough use your arm three fingers and that's how you hold the trombone in order to create a sound something has to vibrate if I choose to sing as I'm talking to you right now my vocal folds or vocal cords they're vibrating as I'm talking which creates a sound um, and for woodwind instruments they would blow into their instruments if it's a, a clarinet or an oboe uh, a bassoon they have a reed which they blow into, which causes vibration, which makes a sound. For brass instruments, specifically for trombone, we would have to buzz. And how we buzz, we would blow air out of our lips, and our lips will be close enough to where it'll start vibrating, therefore creating a sound um, on the trombone. So in order for me to do this, I'm going to just use my mouthpiece. And there are two approaches that I'm going to show you. The first approach, is by using the M syllable. So if you say M, M, this is how we have a good embouchure. All right, so M. Now, by using M, I'm not biting down on my lips. I'm not saying M, M which essentially sets the corner of my lips to the side. And then my teeth are sitting right on top of my, my lips, not necessarily biting down, but sitting right there, which form an M. All right, so say M with me, M. Yeah, all right, M. And that's how you have a good embouchure, all right? By creating that M syllable, you could have the embouchure to, uh, to play the trombone and any of the brass instruments, but specifically for the trombone by using M, M. 
There's a second approach you can use. Uh, we've talked about the M syllable, and this second approach is by using a two-step uh, approach by saying we too. By saying we, you can see the corners of my lips being pulled back, we too. So by saying we, the corners go back, two sets up the pucker. We too. All right. So again, going back to the first uh, example, M. Or if you want to choose the we too approach, we too. Are two ways that you can utilize um, so you can have a good embouchure. Now, as I'm doing this, you've noticed I didn't puff my cheeks. I didn't do this. Because by puffing your cheeks, it relaxes your your lips to the point to where you can't create a buzz. So make sure as you're buzzing that you're not puffing your cheeks. All right. You only need this part here, which is which is your embouchure. All right. A good way for you to to check for this is to look in front of a mirror. You look in front of a mirror and then you spot check to see what's taking place. You buzz into your mouthpiece and you just make sure that your lips does not. Uh, I'm sorry, not your lips, your your cheeks doesn't puff, um, puff up. All right. It's just only using your lips. We too, which is the second approach. Or you can use the first approach, which is the M. There are seven slide positions on the trombone. I'm going to discuss them right now. So, first position is considered home. We're all the way in. This first position. Second position, we move a couple of inches out. All right. So, if you notice where the bell is located, we're not there yet. All right, we're halfway in between the bell and first position. So again, first position, second position. Third position is where you have the brace literally right next to the bell. All right, as a review, first position, we're home. Second position, we're in between home and the bell. Third position, we're at the bell. Fourth position, we're slightly past the bell. As a matter of fact, the, the end of the inner slide, sorry, the outer slide, is essentially right next to the bell. All right, again, as a review, first position, all the way in. Second position, we're in between first, home, and the bell. Third position, the brace is next to the bell. Fourth position, we have the end part of the outer slide next to the bell, all right? Now, the next couple of positions are a little bit tricky. Fifth position, you're a couple of inches out. Now, notice my arm is not fully extended. This is fifth position. I'll come back to this to further explain it, all right? So this is fifth position. Sixth position for most people, our arm is fully extended, all right? Sixth position, your arm is fully extended. A small review. Fourth position is where you have the end of the outer slide next to the bell. Sixth position, arm fully extended. Fifth position is in between that. Notice that my arm is slightly bent. All right, it's not fully extended as it would be in sixth position, but it's slightly bent. And again, fourth position is where you have the end of the outer slide next to the bell. Seventh position, which is the last position, is your arm fully extended, arm and wrist fully extended. Now, once you move your slide all the way out, all trombones have this indentation towards uh, maybe about a couple of inches away from the end of the outer slide. I'm sorry, end of the inner slide. Now, once you, if you're able to see the indentation, you're in the realm of seventh position. If you do not see the indentation, you're still in sixth, all right? 
So the difference between sixth and seventh position, sixth position, arm is fully extended, but the wrist is not. Seventh position is arm and wrist fully extended. Small review. First position, all the way in. Second position, in between first and third position where the bell is located. Third position is where you have the brace next to the bell. Fourth position, the end of the outer slide next to the bell. Fifth position, a couple of inches out. Again, not fully extended yet. Sixth position, arm fully extended. Seventh position, arm and wrist fully extended. The horn I've been using up until this point is called a tenor trombone. As you can see, this horn looks slightly different. This is uh, what you would call a tenor bass, or how we call it today, an F attachment trombone. All right, we have extra tubing and it serves a purpose. Now, this has a, an attachment, a trigger mechanism, which does a couple of things, but before I talk about it, Without using this, this serves the same purpose as the horn you've seen in the previous uh, shot. Now, it does the same thing. Now, the last note I just played, all the way out in seventh position, would be E. All right? This is the lowest note that I can play on any trombone without the use of this mechanism here, which is the trigger, all right? Now, by using this trigger, it extends the horn a couple of notes. So you can see that one of the purposes of this mechanism, which is the F attachment, the trigger, is to help the trombone go lower than, um, than it needs to, all right? If I were to play the other instrument, this instrument here, as you can see, it does not have the, the trigger uh, mechanism, so it can only go but so low. This here, as I mentioned, is a tenor bass. So it has a, the, the capabilities of going lower like a bass trombone, all right? So that's one um, way of you using the trigger. Another way is by um, exposing alternate positions. Now, for most people, I mentioned for sixth and seventh position, some people's arms may be a little short. Um, it happens, you know, but we will grow up. Um, and because of this, we use this trigger um, mechanism uh, to serve as an alternate position for sixth and seventh position. So if I were to play this note in sixth position, I would come to first position and use this trigger and it'll give me the same note. Magic trick, magic trick. Same thing if I were to go to seventh position. I would go to second position and use the trigger. Now this is not any commercial trickery or some type of magic trick. Um, but the reason why this is possible is because we have this extra tubing here, which is about the same length as if you were to go out to sixth position. So this is the reason why I can play the note that I play here in sixth position, which is C in sixth position, and I played it in first position with the trigger. Same thing with the B natural, I played it in seventh position. By going to second position and using the trigger, I'm able to play the same note, all right? So if and when you have the opportunity to play um, an F attachment trombone, just know that um, it gives you more options and is able to play lower than the regular tenor trombone. The last thing I want to discuss is the importance of having a good tone on the trombone. Um, it's important to have a good tone on all instruments, 
but I'm going to show you a good way of having a dark sound on this instrument here, which is the trombone. Uh, so there's a tendency for trombonists to have this tight jaw clenched mouth um, approach which is sounds nasally so I'm going to show you this this is the incorrect way of playing the trombone and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bite that da down on um, my my mouthpiece or bite down like I'm just chewing a gum um, biting like there's no tomorrow and what that's going to do is going to create this bright nasally sound <laughs> Right. All right. Now, one way to fix this is to have this yawn approach. I'm, you could either look at it as a yawn approach or as if you're blowing into a cold window. You're blowing hot air into a cold window. All right. Uh, keep this in mind. When we yawn, can we control a yawn? No, I'm just going to answer it for you. You can't. Even when we try to control it, we're like, mm. so our mouth opens, all right? Our jaw drops and therefore our throat opens up. When we drop our jaw, we have the, we're enabling our air to come out of our body easily. Rather than clenching our teeth, now the air is being distorted to coming out of our instrument, which is the reason why you heard what you heard. Again, this is me clenching my teeth and it's disrupt is disrupting the flow of my lips vibrating all right so here's me dropping my jaw as if i'm approaching this with a uh yawn approach all right i'm dropping my jaw <laughs> now it seems like i played louder i didn't all right it's just the room responding accordingly because of the fact that the the sound the vibration is able to express itself freely rather than being restrained all right so you want to drop your jaw and therefore it'll create um that dark sound all right so you can look at it as a yawn approach just dropping your jaw or as if you're blowing hot air into a cold window now if you were to blow uh, i'm give, i'm going ahead and give you an example if you blow, if I tell you to blow cool air into your hand, you're automatically going to do this. You see how my lips are puckered and then my jaw is slightly closed? Now, if I were to tell you blow hot air, automatically you're thinking, drop my jaw. It's the same approach. All right, so you're dropping, I'm dropping my jaw. And that'll help me to create a dark sound. Thank you for tuning in to this video. Uh, I hope that you've learned about the trombone. If you have any other questions, my information is um, indicated below. Uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime and I uh, would not hesitate to help um, in your endeavors. Uh, thank you.